Hello there, sword friends. This is going to be a quick video on a Yasumune Katana that recently was finished up. It's a Shinsakudo, or a, a Japanese-made Katana, that I picked up from Aaron Justice some time ago. He had already done the Saya and the Sugakore. It had a Fuchi Kashira. It didn't come with a Suba, but I bought this kind of as a project blade where the project was pretty much almost done. So I went and attached a Suba to it, got some new Sepa made for it, had it wrapped, found Minuki for it as well, and mostly I just kind of finished up the, the little bits of the project that were remaining. This one doesn't have swirly mitsudomes all over it, believe it or not, so I have some other stuff to share with you. Some basic notes about this sword. It's a 31 inch blade, which is a pretty sizable blade considering a lot of the katanas that you see on the reproduction market kind of go up to around 29 inches, maybe. That 31 inches also doesn't include the habaki, which would add another inch, so almost an okatana length here. Point of balance is 6.5 inches from where the suba is. The handle is almost 12 inches long, 11 and 3 quarter, and the sori is 1.25 inches. That's the curvature of the blade measured from if I take the tip and kind of where the blade starts after the habaki and set them on the table. That tallest point there is the measurement of the sori, and that's 1.25 inches or an inch and a quarter. Again, not really that crazy given the size of this sword. All right, we can go over some more fun stuff on the sword. Beginning with the Saya, what you can notice is that it is a stone washed or a stone kind of texture. It's called Ishime. It has a kind of a, a sand, light sandpaper like texture to it when you touch it with your hand. The thing I like about it is that it really doesn't show blemishes very easily and it's, you know, pretty easy to touch up, if you will, and not notice pings and dings so much. The other bit that I'll note about the Saya is that it has buffalo Kurigata, that's this part where the Sageo would go. Uh, the Koiguchi and Koijiri, or the ends of the Saya, also have that same kind of buffed buffalo horn type look to them. Uh, this is a really kind of plain Jane Saya. It is a custom handmade Saya, don't get me wrong. It's, it's not that it is not interesting and cool in its own right, but this is one of the more basic Saya. Very simplistic, kind of a user piece, if you will. Doesn't really look bad at all, but it at the same time lacks some of the zazziness of many of the other sword projects that I've done and I would I would put this more as just kind of the the uh, basic no frills type look. Now let's talk about the Ito. So what you can see on the Ito is that it is a blue silk Ito over a black full wrap of Samegawa. The Samegawa is a small nodule Samegawa but it is a full wrap so it gives the handle some additional structural integrity there. It has kind of a water wave theme. You can see there are Koi Manuki. These are antique Koi Manuki, I believe, from the Edo period. They have some detail on them, which is pretty nice, and it plays in really well with this kind of water wave theme that's subtle and not too bold or in your face. I mean, at a glance, the fittings and all of that just kind of look like a, a very basic sword, but if you look at it a little closer, there's kind of a water wave theme going on with the blue over the black and the, the Koi Manuki. The Fuchi Kashra were provided from Aaron Justice, and I'm not 100% sure exactly where they came from. They look like not production kind of stamped out pieces. They have a lot of detail there. They very well could be cast or uh, more modern pieces, though I, I can't really say for certain uh, where they came from. The Suba and Manuki are, are antique Edo period pieces, but the, the Fuchi and Kashra, I, I would guess, are, are more modern if I had to, had to gamble. But I'm really pleased with how everything came out. If you look at the transitions between the Fuchi and the Ito, it looks really nice. Uh, the Koiguchi and the Fuchi also really look like the transitions are, are well done. The color scheme between the Suba and the Habaki and the Seppa and the Fuchi Kashira all kind of mesh together really well. I'm really, really pleased with the overall appearance of the project. Now, in terms of the Suba itself, I mentioned that the color is pretty close. You can see that this is an antique piece. It has a lot of patina and age to it, and it has a, an interesting texture. It also has a pleasant look to it as well that I think matches the Fuchi Kashira really well. The Fuchi Kashira are like this kind of lacquer theme. It would be what I would call it's like a, a cracked lacquer. At least that's what I, I think it is. It's an Ishime theme, if I, or at least that's the closest thing I could find online. And the, the Suba matches that color pretty well. As for the Ito, you can see that the diamonds are really even. The knot is well done. Uh, the Ito is also really tight, so if I'm pressing it with my fingers here, you can see that it doesn't really move around at all. I haven't really handled it or used it very much, and this is what you would expect from a custom sword with a new wrap, but it's 
It's all very tight, very even, and very well done. I can also note that the Sai holds the Habaki reasonably well. If you look, I can push it out with one finger and I can uh, pull it back into the Sai with one finger as well. And it's not taking too much effort, but at the same time, it doesn't simply fall out. As I mentioned earlier, the Koiguchi or the mouth of the Sai is made with buffalo horn and it's made in a traditional way. And you can see that it hasn't been used a lot. Also, it holds the habaki pretty well. As I turn it upside down and shake it at my shoe, it doesn't fall out or anything like that. A good jolt will cause the blade to come out, but it doesn't uh, inherently come out just by turning it upside down. Now I can move on to the pokey pokey stabby part, or the part that most folks are interested in. And this blade is a, a 31 inch blade. You can make out some interesting patterns in the Hada. The polish is, is pretty reasonable, though in the light you can see there are some minor scuffs and blemishes. Not uncharacteristic of a blade that comes from Kamunjo, which I will talk about in just a moment, but the thing to note is that there is some activity in the Hamon. It's a very pleasant blade to look at. It feels uh, nimble for its size. It has a pretty wide base and a thin tip for a blade at 31 inches long, and I think there's, there's a lot to look at. You can see some of the detail coming out in the sunlight, and overall it, it just has a very pleasant look and feel. Very simple, simplistic. I think the blade would be uh, kind of more ideal for a tall practitioner who's looking for a shenken for uh, to use free Ido. Uh, perhaps you want something with a more traditional feel to, to cut with, made from a, a more standard construction. You can see on the planes of the blade here that it's got a reasonable polish on it. Um, some decent niku or, or kind of a, the apple seed shape of the blade and, and the polish overall, while it does have some blemishes, the, the lines are overall pretty clean and nice. Now the other thing I guess I'm going to note is that while I think it might be appropriate for a practitioner, it, it certainly looks fine on the wall. It looks like a very basic simple sword uh, and it also will likely cut. It's a very real piece, but I think in terms of how nimble and nice it is to move around with, uh, it seems like a great tall guy blade or somebody that studies a style that requires a, a longer sword. The thing I'm going to touch on though, as I mentioned, the blade originally came from Kamunjo. That's what Aaron Justice said uh, when I purchased it from him. And Kamunjo is an eBay seller and some of the nature of the blades can be a little bit dubious in that collectors of Nihonto are not 100% sure that uh, these blades are not gaime or forgery. So the blade is signed Yasamune. I do not know if that is an authentic signature or not. What I do believe is that the blade is folded. I can see that from some of the patterning in the blade. The polish is nice. I believe it is a Japanese made sword just based on the other bits of Japanese blades that I've seen. However, I don't know if it is in fact made by Yasumune or not. There's some speculation that some of the blades may be from some hungry swordsmith that's exceeding his quota and selling things on kind of black market or second uh, hand channels. I'm not exactly sure about the validity of any of these claims, but what I do see is a nicely folded blade. It appears to be of a, of a traditional kind of laminated construction in a very basic polish that shows some of those details. But I don't know for certain if it is or is not a genuine Yasumune blade. And I think that the, the price overall kind of reflects that. I'm not trying to uh, get a crazy fortune for the blade. Uh, also know that some of the what looks like black smudges on the edge are not dings, that's from the stand that I was putting it into, and you can see it's sharp because it pulled some of the paint off the stand. Overall though, uh, what I will say about the blade is that it really has a, a pretty reasonable amount of character if you're looking inside at some of the details. It really pops out in sunlight and I'm able to see a lot of the activity in the hamon that is otherwise obstructed by, by how it's polished. It is a, an overall nice look. The hamon kind of pops out in just about any light, but you really need some, some sunlight or natural light to observe the more intricate details along the hada and inside the hamon and seeing some of the different patterns that exist within there. The kasaki is a kind of, I would call it a chu kasaki almost, or a basic shinogi zakuri type kasaki in that it's kind of on the smaller side. Uh, and here's some basic photos of just the overall blade. I tried to capture something that shows some of the patterns, but it's tough to get that to photograph. I hope that these images 
give you some idea of what to expect in the blade. Anyway, the end all be all that I would say is that the blade is from Kamanjo, and I think that what you get is at least a Japanese made blade. If you're looking for something uh, with a more traditional type of construction and you want to do it on a budget and you're not necessarily interested in the authenticity that goes with buying a kind of papered Shinsakido, then it may be a reasonable option, but buyer beware. That is all I have for you. I hope you found this video interesting or at least kind of amusing. And as always, cheers and thanks for watching.